One of the most confusing things as far as HVAC techs and installers is which drill, which power tool to buy for what job. This came up recently in our M18 and M12 discussion where we discussed which type of Milwaukee tool is best suited for an HVAC tech. As an HVAC tech, I always used a 12 volt drill because I didn't really need the power of an 18 volt drill and 12 volt drills have come a long way. But I wanted to test something a little bit different today. I wanted to test a 18 volt basic drill. It's 20 volt, it says 20 volt, but it's really an 18 volt drill when it's under load. And it's a brand that you wouldn't expect because I like to find cheap tools that work. And we're gonna test this cheap tool to see how well it works against a 12 volt brushless skill drill. And I'm also gonna test it against my Ryobi one plus HP drill driver, which is a brushless top of the line drill from Ryobi. Ryobi? Ryobi. I'll be talking about this bad boy right here, which is a Bauer drill sold at Harbor Freight. A lot of you guys might look down on Harbor Freight with good reason, because they're not your Milwaukee's, DeWalt's, and Makita's, but sometimes you can't afford to get that kind of stuff. And when this drill costs $44 on special and it's brand new, has a metal chuck, two speeds, and is brushless, it's worth taking a look at it. So we're gonna pit it up against these other two to see which one of these get the greatest amount of torque, which is basically, who's the most powerful? I have three two by sixes screwed together to form a four and a half inch tall test piece. I have this rig built right here. This is a torque adapter with a three quarter inch impact socket and a socket adapter for the drill. I'm gonna put this on each one of the drills I'm testing to see how much torque is built up while it's driving in this beefy lag screw. This is a big old lag screw. The drills probably won't be able to drive this all the way in. At least 12 volt probably won't be able to do it. I am gonna drill pilot holes for each one of these lag screws so that we don't have to sit there trying to bite into the wood. It'll go ahead and be seated rather quickly and we can get the test underway. All the drills will be in first gear. I'll turn the torque adapter on here. We'll run it as far as they'll go. Each battery is fully charged. Gotta make sure they're in drill mode here. I was able to get the Ryobi to produce 22.7 foot pounds, which is somewhere around 250, 260 inch pounds. All right, I had the Bauer drill in first gear. Do the same test again. I was able to get 15.3 foot pounds with the Bauer drill. Now I'll be doing a little skill 12 volt drill just to see how it stacks up. Make sure it's put in first gear and set on the drill setting. So the skill actually got 10.6 foot pounds, which is basically about 120 some inch pounds. Honestly, I've been using this little Hercules drill around the shop quite a bit. It's 12 volts too. It's a brushed model, so I don't expect a, a victory out of this by any means, and I expect it to come in last, actually. But I was curious, since I've reached this drill a lot, because it's pretty handy because you don't need a lot of power from most tasks. And I'm sure I could use this for service work, but I'm curious how it's gonna stack up against the brushless skill, especially. All right, put it in first gear, set in drill mode. And uh, this just pray it doesn't smoke it up because that's why I'm not using a rigid because the rigid was to, to start smoking again, probably. All right. So just five foot pounds from the Hercules, roughly 60 inch pounds of torque. So not a whole lot of torque at all. It does really small tasks really well, but they're gonna have to be really small tasks. All right, I just can't help myself, guys. I'm even gonna give the rigid a you know, because the rigid has been smoked up so many times, but it still keeps on going. And you guys know, those of you who watched me for a while, I used this drill a lot back in the day. This is my service drill from way back. I'd hate it if it died completely, but I mean, you got to be living your life. And living your life means you got to live on the edge. <laughs> so I am going to first remove this with the big dog. It's got plenty of torque. It's a a mid torque impact wrench. Gonna put it in first gear. I just pray, cause you can't even see the clutch anymore on this drill. 
I just pray it survives. All right. What I've been doing is, you know, I drill it down and I give it a couple extra pushes there right at the end, and then I call it. All right, it's going to start smoking. It did smoke a little bit. It always does. It's perfectly normal. Hold on. No, oh, not too bad. You can't really see it anymore. So, look at that. <laughs> 11 foot pounds. <laughs> How'd that thing get 11 foot pounds? Look at that. Almost up there with the skill. Right there at the skill. <laughs> no way. It must be imperfect. It's not a perfect science what I'm doing, but I'm just trying to bring some products in here so you guys can see what's good and what's bad. There's some good stuff out there. This brushless skill is good for service. Smaller drills are good for service. And uh, the Bauer is kind of caught in between, just like the Roby, in between install and service. Because with install, you want something a little beefier. You want something that's gonna be able to drill out some hole saw bits. Uh, maybe we'll try that again next time. For this time, we'll just settle with torque. Thank you guys, I appreciate you watching. If you wanna watch more videos just like this one, click on this playlist right here. If you want to see our brand new video, click right here. If you want to find out more about the great sponsors that make this show happen, click up here. And to join our email list where I notify you when we're going live, click right here.